fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Lord, we vow to live holy. serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Staying together, praying together, any storm we can weather. Scripture focus is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Amen. Welcome, family. Um, our prayer for tonight is titled Choosing Kindness. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, the King of kings, Lord of lords, El Shaddai, the one that created heaven and earth, the Father of all living things. Father, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you because there's none like you. Father, we thank you and bless your wonderful name. El Shaddai, we thank you. We bless you for life, for sparing our life till today since we were born into this world. You've cared for us. Even when we're sleeping, we know nothing about our loved ones. We know nothing about the problems of this earth. We thank you because still you wake us up in your love. Father, we thank you because your words say, come, let us reason together. We come because we want us 
to humble our heart and ask for forgiveness for our sins. Father, as I stand to intercede for everyone, for my family, for myself, for the church family, I ask you to forgive us with the precious blood of the Lamb. I plead the blood for the children in our churches. I plead the blood for our children in our families, for our husbands, for our wives, for that we have sinned and come short of your glory. We thank you that the blood is able to cleanse and make us righteous through Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you give us the grace to choose kindness to one another, to our children, to forgive when we forgive your shame kindness. Father, we ask you to please help us to do this. We can't do it by our power, but through Christ, you can do all things. Help us to see kindness, to choose kindness in a place of work, to choose kindness with their neighbors. Let them see Christ's light, the shaking of glory shining through us, and they will want to know you. Father, help us to express kindness. The people we meet on our way, the people you deliberately put in our lives so that we can show kindness and they be attracted to know Jesus Christ. Father, your word said, you put kindness, you put people in our ways and we fail to entertain them and failure could mean failing to entertain angels on our ways. Father, please give us the grace to choose kindness in our action, in our speech and whatever we do, may we show kindness that depicts Christ Jesus. Father, that help us Help those in our churches, help us. Even those sitting beside us in church, sometimes we are not together in love. But your word said, if we don't love people we see, how can we love you? Whereas your commandments for us to love one another. Father, help us, give us grace to choose kindness, to love one another. Father, thank you, because I know you will Bless us and give us more than we have asked because we pray in no other name but the precious and powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today um, for our Family Life Togetherness uh, Week of Prayer. Uh, I'm Chris Roberts, uh, representing or a representative of the Roberts family. Um, so I'm just a really tiny piece of uh, an extended family that goes uh, beyond uh, different countries and continents, uh, both by blood and also uh, by faith through the uh, Church of Jesus Christ. Um, so really happy for you uh, that you've joined us, uh, happy that you joined us, as you say, um, today, which will really focus focus on the idea of choosing kindness. So choosing kindness as individuals, which is an extension of choosing kindness in our homes and um, out, out of far as well through our friends, our workplace, our uh, you know, student hubs, etc. So the idea is looking at choosing kindness as individuals and also as a family. And so as we heard the scripture readings taken from uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 4, verses 32. So that's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. So if you take your Bibles um, out and if you read this with me, so it simply says, uh, be kind, compassionate and forgiven each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. And so it simply says again, be kind, uh, compassionate and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Um, let's pray quickly as we move into um, this uh today's focus. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to ask you to be with us and enable us to take something from this, whether it's the idea of being kind to other people and how we extend that through um, our, our, our loves and our actions in our homes, to ourselves individually and to those externally as well. These things we pray for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so we've seen this scripture uh, as we've been told and we've been given an example of, of a lifestyle to live and we've been given a simple instruction to be kind, to be compassionate and to forgive other people in the exactly the same way God forgave us. So I'm quite, uh, I look at things in quite uh, detail, so I really want to focus on two things primarily. So number one, looking at what the idea of kindness is and how that's defined both in the dictionary, but also from a faith-based perspective. So the dictionary says that kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. So being friendly in your persona, being generous in your actions, and being considerate and being empathetic. So understanding other people within the social setting. Now, the Bible and the Hebrew word is interesting. So I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but anyway, it is called hest. So H E S E D, which is, which has no equivalent in English, but is broadly framed as um, steadfast love, faithfulness, loyalty, graciousness, and goodness. That's what it's, it's termed as biblically speaking. So steadfast love, faithfulness, loyalty, graciousness, and goodness as well. So we give an example of Jesus Christ, who we all follow as Christians, it's in the name, right? And how he expressed kindness and the importance that he attached to it. So we see biblically that Jesus loved being kind. So when people were hungry, he fed them. When they were lonely, he spoke encouraging words to them. When they were sick, he healed them. When they were sad, he made them laugh and smile again. When they felt ashamed, he lifted them up, forgave them, and then gave them a brand new life. You could see Jesus hugging and blessing little children, but also extending that to doing so with their parents. When he saw how much people were hurting in their hearts, he wanted to mend their pain with a very special medicine of kindness that we can all share. And so we see this example as well, specifically in, in, in the last, in his last days on earth with the disciples and the last supper, which you all know the story of. So they gather around to eat. Um, and so Jesus at this point knew his time on earth was pretty short. Um, so he gathered them for a feast at the Passover. And so there was a bowl there. And there were towels, there was water, but there was no servants. And so they're all sat there. You can imagine, you can picture in your eyes' mind. They're sat there wondering who's going to do what. And like pride gets in the way of saying, I'm not going to be the first person. I'm not going to, you know, um, serve this individual. And Jesus sees them as like, you've been together for like three years, man. Like, how are you still in that position? And so he quietly, you know, takes his robe off. Um, the, the ties a towel around his waist, you know, pours water into a bowl. And now the disciples are looking at each other, feeling the shame because their master and um, their savior is now being the servant where they were hesitant to do the same as well. But Jesus wasn't embarrassed about it. He did it because it was the way in which he was showing them how much he loved them. And here's the other kicker. He wasn't just doing that with people who were loyal to him 
as we looked at the definition, actually he was doing that to someone who was the antithesis of loyalty, who betrayed him. And Judas was in that setting, yet Jesus was still able to do that uh, for them as well. And so this idea of kindness, we see as, as an example through Jesus Christ who we believe in. So the question is, and why should we be kind? So actually, do you understand the, the practical elements and benefits for us being kind individuals to ourselves, but most importantly, also to other people as well? So number one, the main reason, so the two reasons, but one, I would say is it's, it's good for you. It's good to be kind, right? Not just because you can see someone else's happiness through it, but actually there's a health benefit that's attached to it. So when we do good things, well, check this out. When we even think of doing good things, there's a feel-good hormone that runs through our body. Again, I'm going to mispronounce this. All the scientists and doctors will get get me, but oxytocin that washes over our brain. So when we think of doing good things, or so when we actually act out these good things, all these hormones come into our brain and, and flows through our body. And when we do this, we become more thoughtful, we become more considerate, we become more caring, we become wiser, we lower our stress levels because you're doing good things as opposed to being upset and trying to get someone back. And then it also releases anti-aging hormones in our body. Um, so if you don't want your skin to crack, then you can try try this as well. And it also helps us uh, have better relationships with other people, other human beings in, in and around us and reduces the number of conflicts that we ultimately have. So that's the health benefit to it. Now, the spiritual benefit is that it blesses other people. So we understand that God wants us to be kind as uh, because it blesses the, uh, those that we are helping. See, Jesus was filled with compassion uh, with people that he met. So he told us the two most important commandments of what? Loving God and then also loving your neighbor and loving other people. See, when we're kind, uh, we are like this big funnel uh, that catches much of God's love as possible and pouring it into the lives of other people. And that's exactly what Jesus did whilst he was on earth as well. So that's the idea of kindness. So I looked at that and I was like, that's interesting. That's something that we know. That's something that's good to do. And typically people try and do it. But there was another part in the text that got to me. So going back to Ephesians 4.32, where it says, uh, be compassionate. We understood that from, you know, the, the different lessons that we just picked out. And then it also says, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you. It's interesting, right? So there's kindness and forgiveness walk hand in hand. It's an interesting thought, I thought. And so I looked at what the idea of forgiveness meant. So the Greek word in the Bible, again, I'm, I'm going to <laughs> probably get this wrong, and all my Greek uh, Christians will be after me, but a, a, a femi, which simply means letting go. So it's the act of pardoning a defendant, so pardoning someone who doesn't deserve it. But what's interesting is not just the pardoning, the act of doing that, but it's simply just letting go. So it doesn't just benefit the individual that you've forgiven, but it also is beneficial for you. So guess what? You might be finding it hard to forgive someone. I understand that where someone's caused you so much pain and they cause you so much hurt. You can't comprehend the idea of forgiving that person because why should you? They hurt you, right? But actually what the Bible saying is that you're not just pardoning them but you're letting go. So you're now letting go of any hurt and pain and distress that someone else has inflicted on you. And then guess what happens? That that, that ability to be kind, those uh, hormones that we talked about, those uh, reduced stress levels all become to, all start coming through the, through the act of forgiveness that blends into kindness. All these things kind of work hand in hand. God's incredible, man. Like he knows what he's doing. So when he's telling you to forgive people multiple times, it isn't just because of that. It's because he wants you to be compassionate and to be kind. And the only way you can do that is by simply letting go. So if you're struggling today to let go, just pray. Pray for the person that hurt you, but also pray for yourself as well. And God is capable of doing the impossible thing that you didn't think was possible. So there's two key things. So it's forgiveness and kindness. So this idea of like what you practically do. So we've seen in the, um, in the focuses for the days, the practical things that we can do and taking steps to be, 
to be kind with this, right? So I remember uh, the, as I was uh, kind of reading this, there was a movie that came to mind, which is called Pass It Forward. So it's, a, I was going to say it's an old movie, but it's a, a few years ago. And I, I, I remember the general premise of the movie. I can't remember it uh, scene by scene as an example, but I'll give you a brief summary. So in essence, there was a young kid who had an alcoholic mom and also an abusive and absent dad. And he was struggling a bit in school. So his social studies teacher gave him an assignment. And the assignment was pretty simple. So the assignment was think of something that will change the world and then put it in action. So he went to the kid, recognized his struggles and set him an assignment. Think of something that will change the world and put it in action. And this kid being pretty smart, and I love this. So what he does, he he conjures this notion of paying things forward. So check this out. So he pays a favor forward, not back. So what that means is that when someone did something kind to him, rather than being kind back to that person, he was then kind to multiple people. So specifically three people. So for every good gesture, he then multiplied that by three. Sounds a lot like how Jesus kind of treats us, right? When we don't really deserve it. So rather than just paying the favor back, he now does it three times over. So the idea is that each person who then received his acts of kindness then does it three times over to the next person, uh, to three other people, sorry. And then the, those three then did some other three. And then guess what is supposed to happen or what typically happens? I think in the movie, if I remember correctly, it does happen. So it begins to then spread like wildfire because everyone starts to do kind things, not to the people that have done it to them, but to other people who weren't um, either undeserved, who didn't deserve it, or people who were more likely unaware that they were going to get something good. So he started paying it forward. So this was a simple idea of his to just move things and, and move kindness through the world by doing it to just three people. It's incredible. It's an incredible idea. And, and it, it's a biblical concept in any event. So as we see the, the different activities that I think we can take on board to be practical in what we do. So the simple things that have been suggested. So number one, you know, buy someone a gift card. Um, if you're on holiday, um, you know, buy, buy something for someone who doesn't expect it, right? Call someone who's alone. We know multiple people of different ages who might be by themselves and really lonely at this time and they need someone to be with them. Or they just need a call. <laughs> you don't know what people are going through. Just give them a call. So that's number two. Number three, you can you know, get some food from a food bank. Uh, I've got like some apples just randomly here. Uh, I didn't place them here. But there's a lot of that and giving it to a food bank. Obviously, I think these get rotten, so probably get the stuff that can last for a longer period of time. Uh, I don't know, buy someone some flowers or plant that's just strategically placed over my shoulder for no reason whatsoever. Um, buy someone some sweets, some healthy sweets that doesn't cause unhealthiness. I'll uh, leave it there. Or if you I love this idea. I saw this one. It says, when you're celebrating your birthday... Do an, a, a, an act of kindness for every single year of your life. The older you are, that's that's quite a lot. Anyway, <laughs> but it's such a wonderful thing to just pass things forward. So to celebrate the life that God has given you, be kind to other people. And what I want to say is sometimes we struggle to do this with our families. We often do this externally. It's easier, right? Because the people who can hurt you the most or grate your nerves the most are often your family. But if you look at Jesus' example, he tried to do it with the closest people to him, his disciples. So I just want to encourage everyone, do these things with your family as well as people externally as well. But I just want to challenge you, to, as the movie um, says, to pay it forward. Do three kind things for people or, or kind things for three people and then encourage them to then pass it forward. Let's put that theory into practice. As Christians, we know it's a possibility we know it's what we've been instructed to do. So my uh, kind of my aim for today is for really us to just take this idea of being kind and choosing to be kind. And we can choose to be kind by choosing to forgive those who have hurt us as well. And so looking at Jesus' example, let's be practical with these different um, ideas and, and, and about how to pay things forward and how to be kind as well. I just want to leave you again with the text, which was taken from Ephesians 4, um, 32, which simply says, 
be kind, be nice, (laughs) be considerate, be compassionate, be thoughtful, be empathetic, and also forgive other people that have hurt you just the same way that God has forgiven us as well. I hope you take something from this and you actually are sat down with your families or wherever you're watching this and you just choose kindness. If you've hurt each other, apologize and just be kind to each other. Let's uh, shore this up with a prayer. Kind of heavy Father, I just want to thank you first and foremost for you being so kind, for you being the example and for you teaching us principles that enable us not just to be beneficial to other people, but actually as a health uh, message to ourselves as well that enables us to have a, a, a better quality of life by doing the right things to people deserved or, un, or un, un, undeserved. Follow your example as you've loved us beyond all measure, beyond all capacity when we don't deserve it as well. May we do the best that we can in the lives that we live just to pass things forward and do good things for other people just because. These things I pray through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Come and fill our homes with your presence. Of our reverence As for me and my house We will serve the Lord As for me and my house We will serve the Lord As for me and my house We will serve the Lord We will serve Oh